If I was buying gold and silver for the first time right now, there's quite a lot that I've got out here on the table that I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. There's a lot of gold and silver out there which you really have to use your head before your heart when you buy it. And that can be an exceptionally daunting and difficult prospect for both new and seasoned stackers. So today, let's dive in and talk about all of these factors which play when you're buying and how to get the best results from your gold and silver. everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome one and all to another Precious Metal Ramble. Whether you are a seasoned stacker with a high flying budget or brand new to this world looking to get your first bits of gold and silver, we can all agree that it can be pretty daunting. There are so many choices out there, whether it's gold or silver, fractional, large, gov-minted coins, bars, poured silver, proof coins, the list can seemingly be endless and a lot of the decisions that you make when buying, even if you are seasoned or brand new, will have big impacts on the level of risk that you take on and how much your potential returns will be down the line. And that is of course dependent on your goals when buying this stuff in the first place. So we're not really gonna delve into the reasons why you might wanna buy and then hold for however long, but perhaps just some of my top tip hints and tricks about the right kind of things to think about buying, even if you are a seasoned stacker. But primarily this is targeted towards some of the newer people out there and there are a lot of new people out there that are seemingly jumping headfirst into markets they maybe don't fully understand or appreciate. Now this is of course subjective to everybody's individual circumstances, so please feel free to comment with your own thoughts and opinions down below. It's why we make the style of videos that we do, and I'll see you down in that comment section for a fun, healthy debate. If you are enjoying the video as we go along as well, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're not subscribed, like 70% of all the views on the channel are. We do this kind of video multiple times a week where we have a good think and critically analyze uh, all of the different things around gold and silver. So head versus heart, I think, is the core theme of today's video. That's, I think, where we should start. Even if you're a seasoned stacker or brand new, really analyze why you're doing something that you're doing, why you're buying something, why is the particular bar, maybe it's this bar from the Royal Mint, why is it singing to you? What are you going to achieve with it? What do you want to achieve with it? Those are the things you need to ask yourself. Now that can be really difficult. Speaking from experience, I can tell you that that head versus heart uh, question is so difficult to override and it can be very dangerous and very addictive. I've certainly made mistakes buying various different coins out there using my head rather, sorry, my heart rather than my head. Uh, an example of this might turn out to be this proof Yale of Beaufort in one ounce gold. For a one ounce gold coin sitting at around the two and a half thousand pound mark, it's a very expensive piece of gold. Certainly when you compare it with something beautiful like this Queen's Beast Griffin, which when I bought it was about a thousand pounds and now sits around the 1800 pounds for the premium that it's got within it. So you can see that there's a significant difference here. To make 800 pounds profit on this, I'm gonna to have to try and sell it at nearly 3,300. And that seems like a bit of a stretch for this coin. So that head versus heart for me has maybe made me a little bit of a loss in the future for this coin. Of course, time will tell, but one of the things that I have always done with my gold and silver is look and understand about what I'm gonna to have to do to make the money on that. So whilst I had this kind of heart purchase on this, I do think that the Tudor Beast series is gonna be a really good one to have. There is this little bit of my sort of head analysis going on saying, the worst case scenario for me is we have to wait 20 years for that to even make money. But then the argument is you could have put the same amount of money in some bullion gold and got a much better return. So these kind of questions you need to start thinking about and asking yourself. Now that of course then comes down to budget and where you wanna put your money. Uh, you know, there are plenty of different options out there for things like eagles and governmented silver and there are so many different people out there saying that this is the only silver that you should stack. Uh, it's, that's incorrect, you know, it depends on the goal. This can be the kind of silver you wanna stack if you believe firmly that US Eagles are gonna to continue to rise in premium. And even if buying them now at $15, $20 premium over spot, you reckon that you can get even more so in the future, then fine, that's your strategy, go for it. I'm, who am I to say that something will or will not happen into the future? I don't know, I mean, two, three years ago, who could have predicted that the $3 premium that you'd pay for these would turn into $15, $20 premiums? Nobody, could happen again maybe unlikely to do so. And that's the risk that you've got to balance up. 
So what would I do if I was brand new to stacking right now? If I was with all the hindsight and insights that I've had uh, with my stacking journey to date, what would I buy? Now it's different for what I'm actually gonna buy because I have different views upon you know, what I wanna achieve with various things. But if I had no silver or gold right now, I would not buy silver. And I know a lot of people are like, eh, silver's going to go really high. It's got much more potential than gold. And gold's really quite high right now. Silver's really quite low right now. But it's also a lot more risky. Silver really is a lot more risky. So gold is where I'd go. And I wouldn't buy something like this absolutely stunning, beautiful, heroic, elegant, add as many other adjectives as you can. There's a little task for the comment section. Use a funky adjective to describe this wonderful 50 pesos gold. But I wouldn't buy it if I was brand new now. And the reason for that is kind of twofold. First, it's huge, it's big. It's like 1.23 ounces of gold, something like that. Certainly 1.2 something. It's a big chunky lump of money to lock up. If you wanna sell it, you have gotta find a single buyer to pay that much money for it. Or if you go to a dealer, probably not gonna get much more than spot for it. So instead, the answer lies in fractionals. However, there are a lot of pitfalls when it comes to fractional gold. And I think this is one of the biggest misconceptions for people out there, that if you are on a small budget, the only way that you can stack gold is by buying things like one gram gold bars. But they come at even more of a premium than silver. So if I was to be looking to buy uh, some gold right now and my fractionals was the only option, I'd buy silver instead every time. It's just not worth it, in my opinion, to spend 70 pounds, 65, 70 pounds on a one gram gold bar like this from the Royal Mint, when its metal content value is like 47 pounds. It, it staggers me that people still buy these. You know, you can get certain products like these Harais uh, 10 gram gold discs, which are um, arguably cheaper premiums per one because you're buying 10 in one go, but still have quite a high premium on them. And when you think about the 10 grams of gold in here, and then you compare it with the good old sovereign. This is where I would put my money if I was brand new to gold and silver. These come at 3%, 4% premiums, even less if they are older bullion grade ones. You can get them really cheap right now. And they are the coins to buy. I mean, look at this, bought back in 2006 on eBay. I suspect this was one of my um, eBay Nectar Point cashback kind of offers that I used to get it and you know 206 pounds for a coin like this at the time was a great price and you look at the prices that you can achieve for a sovereign now 350 360 370 for them definitely the way forwards i would also tend to steer clear of the modern sovereigns so you can see the difference here if we can get it to focus come on camera there we go the difference the pink normal new sovereigns Ugh, not a fan of them really compared with the old historical sovereigns and of course the old historical sovereigns will have the old monarchs on them as well so you're getting a the best of both worlds you're getting a cheap 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 piece of gold compared with some of the other fractionals it's in that quarter ounce range just below quarter of an ounce you've got a piece of history in there as well with the older sovereigns you know i've got it in a capsule here but you know what you can just pick it up you can hold it it doesn't matter these were these were just designed to be enjoyed and that for me is something that I think is not reflected in the brand new sovereigns that we have now. I could take this out of the capsule and you know, put fingerprints all over it and play with it and enjoy it like that, but part of me would just like cry inside if I did, and I know a lot of you out there watching would do the same. So for me, this sovereign, the new ones, if you, if you have no choice, fine, buy them, but I think you're better off getting some of these older school sovereigns. Now don't be confused out there on other types of sovereigns. Uh, because the sovereign, believe it or not, is not a trademarked uh, name uh, for like the Royal Mint or for these specific coins. Uh, there are so many private mints out there that will call their coins a sovereign. And this is an example of one that was made by, I can't even remember which one it is. It's like the London Mint Office or something. Um, you know, and they, they are quite expensive when they're sold new from places like this and um, if I turn this around and tell you well so for example this would have been about 600 quid for for it from whatever place it was sold from that's what they market it as that's what they try and flog it for if I turn it around and show you what I paid for it 354 from the silver forum you know you can see quite how much of a loss somebody took on that um, 
unless they bought it for spot price from somewhere else. You know, these these are worth, in my opinion, even less than um, a regular sovereign would be. So, pinch of salt, sovereigns, be careful. New modern sovereigns, even half sovereigns. Half sovereigns do come at slightly more of a premium, but we're talking a few percentage points at best, not uh, anything compared with the one gram uh, or five gram bars. Now, one other thing that these have in their favor is their capital gains tax exemption status. And that's a really important thing. So again, with all of the wondrous insight and history that I've grown to develop over this time here on YouTube, uh, if I was starting right now, I would steer clear of coins that are not capital gains exempt or coins and bars even because this beautiful um, three graces gold bar from the Royal Mint is not capital gains exempt. Now I'm going to be doing a video over this next weekend all about capital gains uh, here in the United Kingdom for gold and silver and also talking about the potential for things to change for tax status on these coins um, for anywhere. I think it's going to be a really interesting video because there has been a rule change here in the United Kingdom which plays a huge role in my decision making for what I'd buy going into the future. So these are all not capital gains exempt which means when you sell them and you make a certain amount of profit over a course of a year you end up paying some tax on them. The beauty about sovereigns, um, about Britannia's, any Royal Mint coin We'll go into more detail in that video over the weekend. Their capital gains exempt. Eagles and things for us in the UK, not. Port Silver, believe it or not, not as well. You know, is it a raw mint coin? No, therefore, capital gains, if you make a profit on it, you have to pay taxes. That's the way it goes. Buffaloes, you know, all of these things, profit equals tax now. So lots of things to factor in. Um, if I was new, I'd buy, if I was new and I had like 20,000 pounds of savings that I wanted to diversify, i just buy as many sovereigns as I could. The other advantage of them is that they have got this small size. So if you needed to release some funds, then you can do so by not having to sell everything. If you buy this 50 pesos or a one ounce Britannia, for example, you've got a lot of money locked up in one product. And then to sell it, you would then have a lot of excess money. So if you needed, I don't know, to buy a new boiler for 600 pounds or something, you know, selling an 1800 pound coin as opposed to two sovereigns, you know, and getting the exact amount, you're kind of wasting some of the gold that you've got locked up there. So, fractionals, gold, I'd ignore silver right now, unless you can get silver for spot price. The main crux with silver is, of course, the premium for it here in the United Kingdom. Um, you know, when we buy silver, we have to pay tax on it from a dealer. However, if you can buy from somewhere like the Silver Forum or private sales um, on Facebook or eBay or wherever it might be, you've got to have some care and attention to what you're buying and making sure it's correct and real. Um, but you know that's potentially a good idea to buy. Now in terms of the other stuff, if you're brand new, you can get caught up quite a lot with this head versus heart. And you might see on my channel and others, coins like the proof coins here, the beautiful, wonderful proof coins that come out from the Royal Mint. Whilst this might be a investment I regret financially, I don't regret buying it in terms of the beauty of the aesthetics and how wonderfully made it is. It's the same thing with poured silver and the poured silver that I make. You'll notice if you've been watching my channel for a long time, we don't really like promote it particularly hard. You know, when we get new products, we put a new product release video out, but it's not like every video I start by going, oh, and if you want to buy our poured silver, then now's the time. We don't do that because I think if I was brand new, buying poured silver is a risk. It's something that I would not necessarily view as the right thing to do, but if you are in the market for something collectible, something unique, something different, something that's built with passion and supports a creator, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying something like poured silver or a proof coin. You know, there are definitely markets for them, but always, always, always evaluate that risk. So what are we at? Minute 14. Thank you to all my BYB ramblers. To those of you who watched the end of the videos, I say thank you and you are cool in that cool kids club. Um, you know, it is subjective. So remember, what I've said in today's video will not necessarily be right for everybody. And I think as well, the moral imperative of all content creators right now should be to give their kind of opinions on what's right for them and not just go buy eagles because they're the best thing since sliced bread. Buy proof coins because they'll be amazing and you'll earn lots of money. There's this ethical dilemma that I think is growing and there's a fair few people who just ignore it. And there's this moral imperative which I feel is um, it's worth more than the clickbait. 
it's worth more than the clickbait. Uh, so here's a little bit of bonus backyard bullion ramble for those who've watched to the end. Um, I cannot stand, cannot stand with a passion, those channels that just continue to hype and continue to put clickbait thumbnails with, um, it's like it's those thumbnails that you see with like someone's face and they've got their hands on their cheeks and their mouths open looking surprised. Or there's like fire in the background or doom or nuclear explosions and all of that crap. Um, it's fear mongering, it's not right, it's not moral, it's predatory in my opinion, especially when you combine it with, and I've talked to X and Y bullion company and they've got a discount code and here's my affiliate code. It's not right and I stand up to it and I say no to it. And I've been approached by many companies for affiliates and I can tell you that those affiliate codes that some creators are getting are earning them tens of thousands of dollars, if not more. So with that in mind, pinch of salt for anything you hear online, even from the likes of myself, you know, it's all subjective. There we go, bonus ramble for you ramblers. If you have watched it now, you're in the super extra exquisitely cool kids club. So we'll see you on the next one. That's it from me, I promise, no more rambles now. Have a good week, we'll see you next time for the capital gains tax discussion and all those updates. See you next time, bye.